sneakers are so beloved by so many worldwide. They may be nothing more than everyday footwear to some, but to others, they're a statement, a passion, and a badge of belonging in a vibrant culture. Welcome to Sneaker Fortress, a show where we dive deep into the world of sneakers, celebrating their unique culture and bringing you the freshest and most exciting content. In this first episode, we'll explore why sneakers are so beloved by so many worldwide. They may be nothing more than everyday footwear to some, but to others, they're a statement, a passion, and a badge of belonging in a vibrant culture. We'll check out some of the most prized sneaker collections and hear personal stories about why the owners love their sneaker fortresses so much. If it's about kicks, you'll find it here on Sneaker Fortress. So let's lace up and enjoy the experience. If there's one word to describe this first guest, it's inspiring. Though he's younger than most people realize, he has a maturity and tasteful eye for sneakers that even some experienced sneakerheads don't possess. JJ Skuman is known as one of the premier vintage collectors in South Africa and possibly all of Africa. His collection has been showcased at stores like Shelf Life and other locations. And steadily, he's building a name for himself as one of the best to do it. We got to sit down with JJ and talk about how his love for sneakers began. My dad, he's actually the bigger collector on our side. So I've, I've a sort of like a more rare collection. So like I have like these, these diamond SPs. Um, these are one of my favorites in the collection. But for my dad, his whole collection is basically based around cartoon sneakers and stuff. So he has like the Air Max 1 Missing Links, the Air Susans. Um, he has a pair of Kung Fu Panda Reebok sneakers. He has uh, some uh, collaboration between Reebok and Ghostbusters where they mimicked the machines that they used to suck the ghosts in. There's a pair of Deodora Astro Boys, which is an amazing pair. He's, his collection is way bigger than mine, but yeah, mine's just comprised of all the more vintage, vintage stuff, so yeah. I'm not too bothered with uh, what goes into my collection because it's my own personal collection. I don't collect for other people and um, I'm not trying to win over anybody's approval. The old heads, the people that are really into this, um, that have been into this for a very long time, longer than I have, will understand what, what I collect and, and appreciate the value. Coming to the part we were really excited about. It was a real treat getting JJ to show us his prized collection of some of the rarest and most unique sneakers you'll find anywhere. We have a legend in the making here. So first we have the Diamond Supply SBs, obviously made with uh, Diamond Supply back in 2006. Yeah, these are probably one of the rarest SBs that we have here in South Africa. Then we have Max one Atmoses from 2017. This is number 12 of 89. Then we have the 1989 Jordan 4 Fire Reds made in Taiwan. These are a dead stop pen UK 10, basically impossible to find. Then we have the 1994 Jordan 1 Chicago's. Um, these were bought in Japan. They definitely also is one of my favorite pairs. And then lastly, we have uh, the 1985 Jordan 1 Breads or Band as we know them. So these um, come from Norway and I've had them in my collection for the last four years or so. I think a lot of people focus on the value of a shoe rather than delving deep into the roots of the, of the history of a shoe. So like a lot of people would rather choose like a Travis Scott Jordan 1 over like a 1985 Jordan 1 or stuff like that simply because people know, know the artist, uh, they know about Travis Scott. 
Um, it's fine if you like the colorway and stuff, and it's fine if you like the details, like the stash pouch that's in the tongue or in the, in the collar. But um, if you are collecting, essentially, you need to also rather focus on what you like uh, not what other people like or what especially the value of sneakers you shouldn't be focusing on the value at all I think at the moment it's more catered towards the value of sneakers and stuff so we often associate uh, things that are value valuable or things that we like according to the price tag that is associated with them. that's why a general pair of Air Force Ones is more desirable than than like a maybe say like a Charles Scott Air Force One, right? The the only difference between those, especially with the recent release, um, is for the Utopias, is the writing on the back, and that's that's like a four thousand rand difference. Is only the writing on the back, so you have to draw the line between okay. Do I like this shoe or do I like the, the value that this shoe has around, around it? So for people who are starting out in their journey and collecting sneakers and such, I would say definitely try and get stuff that make you happy, not necessarily what other people deem as valuable. So don't always focus on the price tag of stuff, rather focus on um, the, just the basic stuff you don't need to own a pair of Travis Scott. You don't need to own a pair of Jordan 1s even. Just buy whatever makes you happy and what complements your style and what you appreciate personally. What I would also say is um, if a deal is too good to be true, it usually is. So rather just um, be cautious and um, try and not get scammed because that does happen in our industry a lot. We deem stuff as valuable according to the price that things are being bought and sold at. So at the moment the culture is definitely focused more around the business side of things rather than art and appreciating the sneaker for what it is. No doubt about it, we had a really good time talking to JJ Skuman. As we mentioned at the beginning, he has a unique take on sneakers that proves just how diverse and exciting the culture is. There's a lot more to come in this first installment of Sneaker Fortress, including a chat with another very special guest. Need a hint? He's a true OG. Keep it locked right here. So we hit the streets of Cape Town to talk about sneakers, the love of sneakers, and the culture around sneakers. The sneakers just more than like stuff you put on your feet, or is it like a genuinely like a culture thing for you guys? I think it's a thing of loving them genuinely and knowing that you feel good when people see you wearing these nice sneakers, feeling yourself. Uh, for me, it's a culture thing. I feel like it's a way to express who you are, the colors that you wear on your shoes. You can just wear white and black to be simple. It shows that you're a simple person, you like simple colors. And I think yeah, it's just a way to express the, thing, the type of things that you like. It's uh, the comfort, it's what the sneaker symbolizes. I think the first place where people really look at you is down below before they start looking at you up here so i think the type of sneaker you're wearing says a lot about you a lot of things will draw me to the sneaker but i think like the main two ones for me is like is it actually comfortable and is it like practical because obviously you see a lot of sneakers that's like a bit too crazy like is it practical to wear every day when it comes with sneakers that's where i actually like build like my first that's like my base you feel me so I put my foots around, you know, what I feel like wearing, like, you know, different sneakers, like, you know. With sneakers, I could ask, like, a huge culture, you feel me? I prefer, like, the old school, the old school, like, you know, um, brands and makes that they used to have, like the Jordans, like the old school Jordans. How many pairs of sneakers do you hold? Um, I think right now I'm sitting at 20, 19 or 20. I literally only have three pairs of sneakers. <laughs> and what are those three pairs? And 
I don't remember one, but I know I have a Nike. I don't know what kind of Nike it is. It's pretty minimal. Um, I've got some Air Forces from years ago, which have obviously like gone a bit yellow. Vans, I'd say Vans, Adidas, the the superstars. That's about yeah. It's like around there, and then obviously Chuck Seventies. So like Converse, Adidas, the superstars specifically, and then Vans. Practical looks good and low stakes. When you go to the store, what inspires you? Is it the price points or is it the style? Uh, so usually when I go to the store, it's not necessarily what's there. I'll go with like a thought of plan already. So I know what I'm looking for. I know the colors. I know the theme, everything that I'm looking for. So when I go, it's really just what catches my eye and what suits, like meets all the criteria that I already have. If you had all the money in the world, what sneakers would you get? Um... I'd probably go actually with these. I'm pretty happy with these. I don't feel like I need much more. I think a gazelle. The Adidas gazelles. Okay, everyone is rocking them. So I'm not big into name brands really, so it's not a particular brand that attracts me. But if I had all the money, I would just say, okay, no, I want that sneaker for this particular outfit, so let me just go and find a sneaker that looks exactly like that. And the brand doesn't really matter to me. I'm buying every Jordan Ford that ever existed. <laughs> If I get the bag now, tonight I have all of them. <laughs> Guaranteed. <laughs> For me, personally, I would even get like a pair of Vans or Stars, you know, um, Air Force Ones. Air Force Ones is a staple. You feel me? That shoe has been going on for like years and it's still going on until right now. Um, Jordan 4s. You feel me? So I have a lot of like variations, but it's not even like your crazy, you know, prices you feel me these are all shoes like under like 2000 3000 rand we told you we've got another amazing guest coming up but before we get to him let's take a moment to pay homage to the culture by counting down five of the rarest air jordans you can find <laughs> if you can find them that is number one nike air jordan 2 mnm as the title suggests the grey and black sneaker was inspired by rapper Eminem and features his lyrics drawn across the upper. They are currently valued between $3,000 and $4,000. 2. Nike Air Jordan 1 Wings for the Future Currently valued between $4,000 and $10,000. These Air Jordan 1 Dave White sneakers which come in the gold, white, red and navy colorway were limited to just 23 pairs. They were created for charity with proceeds donated to Wings for the Future in Los Angeles Inglewood High School, but have become very sought after by sneakerheads. 3. Nike Air Jordan 31 Gold The special edition All Gold Air Jordan 31 was dropped exclusively in New Orleans as part of the 2017 All-Star Festivities. The kicks feature a very bright metallic gold upper and a matching finish on the swoosh. They are currently valued around $3,000. 4. Nike Air Jordan 30 Cosmos Released on July 9, 2016 For only $200 The Air Jordan 30 Cosmos Inspired by the annual Key 54 Street Ball Tournament in Paris Is a limited edition version Of Michael Jordan's 30th signature shoe The sneaker features a galaxy inspired print Throughout its nits upper 5. Nike Air Jordan 7 Miro these Olympic-themed Air Jordan 7s inspired by Donna Iosal, Woman and Bird, a sculpture in Barcelona by Spanish artist Joan Miro. Released exclusively in Europe with less than a thousand pairs, the colorful look of the sneaker is complete with a 9 on the heel. Today, they retail for around $2,000. Everyone who's ever been on the sneaker market trying to get a limited edition or exclusive sneaker and seen it vanish from the shelves will be familiar with the word reseller. But for those who are not fully clued up, we're here to help you. Simply put, sneaker resellers are individuals or businesses that buy limited edition sneakers and resell them, often at a premium. The greater the demand and the shorter the supply, the higher the premium. Resellers often use various strategies to secure these in-demand pairs, including participating in raffles, leveraging online marketplaces, and developing relationships within the retail space. The presence of resellers is a constant source of debate within the sneaker community. While some appreciate that the secondary market offers an alternative for those who miss out on retail releases, critics argue that resellers exploit the limited availability of sneakers. 
driving up prices and hindering accessibility for everyday sneaker enthusiasts. Then, there are automated programs called bots to secure large quantities of shoes, which further disadvantage regular buyers. Whatever people may think about resellers, the reality is that they operate in pretty much the same way that most commodity businesses work. It's all about supply and demand. On top of that, the best resellers have a deep understanding of sneaker culture and know how to influence it. To try to limit some of the more negative aspects of reseller space, brands are looking for ways to stop things like bots and ensure a fairer overall access for all consumers. However, some have accused these same brands of benefiting from the reseller game. Love them or hate them, resellers play a significant role in the sneaker industry and will continue to do so. We weren't just throwing empty words around when we called our next guest an OG. When it comes to the sneakerhead community in South Africa, specifically in Cape Town, there aren't many who can claim to have been there from the beginning like Rolo Rosé. In his own words, he's been around and he's done it all. Among other things, he's a reseller and shared candidly with us some of what he's learned and observed from being in the sneaker game for as long as he has. Sneakerheads, pay attention. The love for sneakers is it's from a very early age, you understand? So, like, like primary school, you understand? But it's, there's a lot of stuff that inspired that stuff, or like where, where I took note of things, you know? Like a, a standout movie would be Chords of the Jungle with my favorite shoes. And then like um, The Substitute with Mark Anthony, and he's running in the hallway with this Nike V-neck with the big swoosh on the back. Like those moments is the thing that like make me like take note of these things, you know, the small things and like in the music videos, all of those things. As far as like sneaker culture, I think that culture and that influence started from before it was like visual media, was print media. So it's like, it's the stages of it. So like the Word Up magazines, the Double XLs, the Vibe magazines, those are the things that I could see. And this is the stuff that like where I would draw inspiration from, so. Um, yeah, and it's it's not just like the culture was in that form. That he didn't know what this thing is, but it's because of a group of like-minded people come together. Now it's a culture, but like it's we never knew that any of the stuff that we were doing is considered culture. You understand? Um, so yeah, I think it, it was from a very early age. Um, I was always into. The, the, the stuff that you would see on TV. We in Cape Town are known for, for, for the wearing the big bubbles, the track suits, like all of those things, looking back to like the 90s, like you see how, how they dressed. So, and having that identification, we still have people, bubble copper that only wears those type of shoes, you understand? And I think it has gotten mainstream now with the AMOs being released in 55 different colorways. So you look at that, then you can see that's, that's how we've always dressed. We did a documentary about that stuff, you know? Um, and it was, it was debuted in Dubai at Soul DXB, so it shows you again like they could hear what we do this side and why we, we wear shoes that, that um, NFL players wear, but we don't have access to those games, you understand? So think about that, like they don't know what sport that player plays. Never seen Ken Griffey swing the bat and hit the home runs. They've never seen Dan Marino play, but they wore the shoes. The reseller space is sometimes filled with controversy. Rolo shared his honest thoughts on this and gave us a breakdown with listening to. Everybody is reselling now. So even the person who got lucky on the raffle is selling a shoe as soon as he gets it. So why would you consider somebody buying up the shoe, a reseller where the shoe was resold by the person who got lucky on the raffle? That term has changed a lot now. So everybody's reselling now. So it goes to the point where you think that someone is, is, is sincere 
because um, they don't have that name or they don't have a, a, a platform where they sell these shoes, but yet they'll sell the shoe as soon as they get it out of the line. There's somebody paying extra on a pair of shoes by somebody who sincerely won the raffle. There's people that's paying people to stand in lines for that raffle. So you can't really say that it's important. I think the importance is that somebody seeing an opportunity and getting money from it, and you decide where you want to be. It's either you adapt or you cry, you understand? So you're looking at frowning upon people that's calling themselves, or people being labeled as resellers, but in the hindsight, everybody's reselling this, you know, and everybody's just getting into that market because I've seen random shoes like Air Force Ones being resold, which is crazy. So I wouldn't say it's an important thing, but it's part of what the culture has become because everybody's reselling now. So don't like, just think about this one person because he can, he can he's, he's able to buy all the pairs and he's the bad guy. This one bro won the lot, the, the, the raffle, and he sold his shoe as soon as he got it. So everybody knows my favorite shoe is the AMO Up Tempos um, because of um, growing up, seeing the shoe on TV, and then like almost 20 years later, actually obtaining that shoe. Um, but it's more of like, that's a shoe that, that everybody knows. That's one of my favorite shoes or whatever. Um, and yeah, I don't, like for now, you see me pushing slides with some Crocs. Easy slides and some crops. That's like the dailies now. It's all about comfort now, you know. Um, I wouldn't say the game is done or whatever, but there's, there's nothing that like grabs me, you know. Um, it's maybe like some Jordan 17s or stuff like that, you know, um, the, 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 the non-hype vibes. But you know, anything that drops now will be considered hype. Picture what you want will wear and just be comfortable, that's it. That's it for episode one of Sneaker Fortress. I hope you enjoyed as we got to celebrate the culture of sneakers. Good news, it doesn't end here. The journey continues and you can join us as we get to celebrate the love of sneakers. Until then, it's all love.